the titles of the videos might get a bit confusing, so I'll say what they mean now. On the far right of the title, there is the title, what the video is actually called. To the left of that, there is the number of the video as I have made it. To the left of that, separated by a period, there is a list of prerequisite videos. If you do not watch those first, you will not understand the videos after. So, before you watch this video, watch video 1, why, open BSD. From left to right, that's prerequisite videos, the video number, and then the title. Imagine you work for a laptop manufacturer. You came out with this beautiful new laptop. It works perfectly, but you need to install an operating system. It's blank, and it's an inconvenience to have to do it yourself, so the vendor does it. The year is 2006, and the market shares for operating systems are 90% at Windows XP, and anything else is irrelevant. Easy. You put Windows XP on there. It works great, it's cheap enough, and everybody knows how to use it. Your customers are overjoyed. Windows Vista comes out, you upgrade, and you upgrade all the way to Windows 10 through the years, all 10 of them to 2016. But, mm, people don't really like Windows anymore. Only about 30% of people actually use Windows. Eh, maybe less, depending on what you count. <coughs> That's because not everybody has a laptop. Nowadays, we have really, really cheap, excellent, hand smell phone, pocket computers. If you say phone, you know that you're running a full computer with a big fancy operating system on it. More than half of people in the world run Android. <coughs> After that, you have Apple operating systems mobile, and uh, JavaScript developer and Starbucks kinds. <coughs> Only then do you get to Windows. It's out of style. But we're still not at a point where hardware vendors can justify making their stuff run on Linux. Writing drivers is expensive because you need to hire people to do it. What other operating systems end up doing is writing the drivers themselves. The drivers are nowhere near as good as they could have been had they been written by the vendor. Being that they're not fast, they might be cleaner or shorter. And sometimes the vendors lock down their hardware, make their drivers for Windows only uh, the compiled versions where if you were to port it to your operating system, you would have to swim through a C of assembly code just to get a couple of lines of C code. Good puns. Uh, so, Linux, it will do that. It will uh, gather a team of people to reverse engineer the NVIDIA graphics cards, and it'll get them to work, and they'll work okay. OpenBSD is a small team. People don't have time to waste on all that driver support. What 
they end up doing is only having free and open source drivers in their operating system. So, almost nothing works out of the box, and not much ever will. If it doesn't work out of the box, there is a very good chance that it will continue not to work. As a general rule of thumb, you want i386 or AMD64, which are 32-bit and 64-bit modern processors that you get from Intel or AMD. Those usually work. Be careful with ARM. You can't run OpenBSD on your phone. OpenBSD does support ARM, but you have to install it from your serial console. You don't just get to plug in a flash drive and turn on your computer, go through your BIOS, and select your flash drive. You have to uh, mangle the OpenBSD files onto an SD card, plug it in, buy a fancy cable, and install it that way. It's too much of a hassle for it to be effective. Here is the full list of supported platforms. Uh, AMD, uh, AMD 64 and i386 work very well. ARM v7 has a very small amount of devices supported and there are some older platforms that work just fine on their respective hardware. Uh, so I've heard. Uh, I386 supports almost everything, but it does not support UEFI. You have to use AMD64. So, you can't run I386 on a 64-bit processor if you have a UEFI system. If you have a free laptop, or a laptop that you already own, any computer, it's worth a try to install OpenBSD on. If you are picking a computer out just for use with OpenBSD, you want a popular system. Usually that's Livono, Dell, Sony, and other major manufacturers that OpenBSD developers and users use. You also want a supported driver. You don't really need to worry about Ethernet displays, keyboard, mice, status lights, speakers, volume buttons, all those peripherals. Your laptop will still charge if you change your operating system. And the things that you really need to worry about are your processor, your graphics card, and your Wi-Fi card. Uh, starting with Wi-Fi, there's uh, manual pages. They look like this if you use the web, and that's how you're going to get to them initially. They're going to be at man.openbsd.org, and you can surely prefix them with whichever specific device you're using. You can just uh, type in the device name, you click man, and there it is. If you don't know the exact device name, which I'm almost sure you don't, you can just go and type in a key identifier, like here it says wireless network devices. You're going to look for wireless network devices. Oh look, there's a list. Here are all the wireless network devices that you could ever possibly use on an OpenBSD system. Four of these are Intel, and lots of these are old, so you can't really run much on an OpenBSD system. This isn't much. Most of these, you can run just plain old, uh, they'll start when you turn, turn it on after the install. IWM and IWN, Intel drivers are special. Because Intel has a bad license, so it puts restrictions on OpenBSD. If OpenBSD wants to uh, include drivers for Intel cards by default, 
So, you have to do, install it separately. You use FW update, which is just a single command you use to get the files on your system. You're going to have a blob. Oh no! But it's going to be fine. If you run that command when you're connected to Wi-Fi, it will install immediately and you'll be able to use it right then. Unfortunately, in order to install it, you need to be connected to Internet. On most computers, you can do that Wi-Fi or Ethernet. But some of the newer ones don't have Ethernet. So you're going to need to do a USB shuffle to get the files on, and that's a hassle. I'll walk you through that. Uh, here is the list of supported Wi-Fi drivers again. Um, video drivers are the last thing that you really need to worry about too much on your device. There are Intel graphics, and there are Radeon graphics. They'll work right out of the box, and you will be able to get fancy colors, run light games, all the stuff, Windows. It'll work really fast because you're going to have graphics acceleration. If you do not have one of those two cards, you will need to have a software acceleration. That means that your computer processor is going to be doing all the work instead of your graphics processor and computer processors are not very good at doing graphics work so your windows are going to be slowly moving around your uh, processor is going to be bogged down doing things it shouldn't and your computer is going to be slow it'll run OpenBSD fine if you don't have a video driver but you won't be able to use the fancy features you get with one if you don't have a Wi-Fi driver uh, then your system will work fine, it's just that you won't be able to connect to the internet using Wi-Fi. You'll have to plug it in every time. And if you don't have a processor that's supported, your computer will, turn, will work fine, it's just that it won't turn on. And go to OpenBSD. So I guess it won't work. And you can argue that it won't work if you don't have any of the other drivers. Another uh, list is this one, where it has all of the video drivers. Pause and look there if you want. You know when I said that NVIDIA drivers weren't supported? Well, I didn't lie. The last one that's supported is the GT200, so uh, you won't be able to run anything modern, like, uh, what is it, GeForce 420 or uh, 1080, the new ones? NVIDIA is a different company ever since 10 or 20 years ago, so you won't be able to get any sort of support. And this list is not that many drivers, really. You'll only be able to get a couple of computers to work. Usually, it's going to work for your small devices, your laptops that are just made for internet browsing. And even if it doesn't work, you'll be fine. You'll just stay in a terminal most of the time because web browsing is going to be difficult. And that's really all you use your uh, graphics processor for if you're using OpenBSD. So you can put fancy games onto it. Remember, if it doesn't work when it first boots after install, it probably will not work, so it's not worth complaining about. 